Hi, we're here today at the Plumation Engineering World Headquarters to go through the setup of a Plumation P2 proportional made it to a four inch valve. The P2 actuator, actually all our actuators are shift in the closed position with a zero position. First thing to do is to make sure you have the right coupling pieces. In this case, we have a star coupler that fits into here that subsequently fits and mates to the valve. The first thing, so when mating to the valve, remember that the actuator is set in the closed position, but this valve is now in the open position. So we want to move the valve to very close to the closed position, or what we think is to be the closed position. Take the actuator, bring it up, mount to the star drive. Okay, so we got the valve mounted up, I'm tightening it down, in this case with a six millimeter hex. In order to do the installation, there's a simple set of uh, tools needed. In this case, for a P2, P3, is a 17 millimeter wrench, small flathead screwdriver, two and a half millimeter hex, and a five millimeter hex. Five millimeter hex is used to take off the cover bolts. Take the cover off straight up. The bolts are captured, so if you turn it upside down, you don't see the bolts will not uh, fall out. And also, on the interior of all, the car, all our enclosures is the wiring diagram. So this will take the wiring diagram, very important about the wiring diagram to look and see what the wiring diagram and where the wires are supposed to go. So when you first take the top off, there is a card, calibration card, that you can remove. In it, it says, do not make any adjustments on the actuator unless you read the IOM. Very, very important also. Major components on the interior are the switch card with the two end of travel switches, two auxiliary switches, heater, incoming connections. This is connected uh, to the proportional card over here that runs the proportional uh, controller. Power comes into one side, control signals all come into another side. In this case, we're mounting the actuator to an open valve or not attached valve or unattached valve. When putting it in line where you cannot see if the valve is closed or not, it's very important to start with a closed valve so the alignment of the actuator to the valve is correct. It's easy to be 45 degrees off, so it's very, again, very important to make sure that the valve is closed and the actuator is closed. First thing we'll do is hook up power to the switch card. Remember, power only goes to the switch card, not to the control card. Remember that power and control should be in separate conduits. In this case, we'll thread the power up into the actuator. On the switch card, it's marked neutral and hot. So we'll put in neutral and hot, in this instance, into those slots on. So I've hooked up power, but I do not have power to the actuator just yet. Next thing we're going to do is set up the actuator for the proportional control as well as the end of travel stops. So the end of travel switches are right here. The end of travel cams, red for close, green for open, are at the bottom. The two upper cams and switches are the auxiliary cams that are set independently of the end of travel. The end of travel cams and switches shut the motor off when, the, when you reach the closed or open position of the valve. So we set the actuator up on the valve. While we ship the actuator in a closed position, it may not always be exactly aligned to the valve itself. Any time you need to make an adjustment of the end of travel switches, you need to back off the mechanical stops. The mechanical stops are set only to prevent the, the manual override from going too far and getting the valve out of position. So with resilient seated valves, you can actually sweep through the closed position. The mechanical stops prevent you from doing that and always being in the white, white quadrant. Say that 10 times fast. So the first thing we do is back off the mechanical stops so they don't engage a gear on the inside of the actuator.
The next thing we're going to do is use the manual override to set exactly where we want the zero position to be. You can see the actuator moving. I'm going to say that is my zero position. Cut. So two and a half millimeter hex. Engage the set screw, back off the set screw. Now I want to find out where the switch changes states or clicks on and off. So I'm going to rotate until I hear the click right there and then tighten the hex screw right at the point where the switch clicks on and off. That is set the close position. Now I'm going to set the auxiliary position by finding the same spot right there and then coming clockwise about two degrees or so and tightening that. So now we're going to set the mechanical stop by running the mechanical stop all the way in until it engages a stop boss on the inside of the gear and then back off two turns, one, two, and set the mechanical stop. Hey, where's makeup, man? I'm starting to sweat too much. We are in Florida. So now we're going to set the open position. We're in the closed position now. We're going to use the hand wheel to open up the valve until we get to the position where it is 100% open. So as with the closed cams, the first thing we do is loosen the set screw and rotate until we hear the switch change state. We set the end of travel cam, which is the bottom green cam. Then, similar to what we did for the auxiliary cam closed, is the auxiliary cam open. Find that, and then rotate a little bit further more in advance in the opposite direction from the closed, so that the open leads the end of travel open switch. Again, we do that by seeing that the upper one is aligned further in one direction than the, than the lower green cam. Yeah. We've set the open cams. Now we're ready to set the mechanical stop. Again, similar to the closed side. On the open side, we engage the boss or the, the stop gear, back off two turns, and then tighten the bolt. Okay, we've set up the actuator for the end of travel, both closed and open. First thing we want to do is come to some intermediate position for the actuator and the valve position. So we just made it some midpoint between open and closed. Next, we put power onto the actuator, in this case, plugging it in. First thing that comes up is that we see the version of the software, in, the case, in this case, 1.15, and then the actuator that, it, that the software is running. And again, in this case, it's a P2 at 120 volts. 24 volts would have a different number. The first number that comes up is the position of the valve, right now at 57.5%. But we haven't calibrated the actuator, so we don't know exactly whether it's 57 or 58 or 60. So the first thing we're going to do is run an auto calibration routine that will align the controller with the end of travel stops. All the controls are managed by the joystick right here. What we'll first do is go to left one, where it says position, left again, where it says real time. Now we'll go to the position for the auto cal, down one brings you to diagnostics with some data collection. Set the process for uh, the actuator, which would be such things as the dead band, fail in position, fail close, fail open. 
and finally to the set to the travel. Go to the right one, it'll say set or uh, auto set, go right one more time, push to run. Push to run, auto cal 4, notice the actuator is moving, it first goes to its closed position, indicated by the red light, finds its closed position, opens up about a third of a degree, that sets the uh, closed position. Now we'll go to the open position, running open, green light comes on, actuator, the valve, actuator drives the valve to its open position, motor shuts off from the switch, actuator comes forward about a third of a degree or so, that sets the open position. For all intents and purposes, both the incoming signal and the feedback signal have been calibrated. Once completed, the board says AC10, the actuator drives to the closed position. The auto calibration scheme is now set. It tells you you're done. Now we go back again to the left one, where it says uh, auto set. Again, to set travel back up through set process, diagnostics, real time. Now we go back over to the right where we look at we can look at faults, process in or the incoming signal or the position. And we can see we're at the zero position. So we've calibrated our actuator. It's ready to go. Now we're going to take a signal generator. This is a Fluke 707 loop calibrator and generate a signal, 4 to 20 milliamps, to open and close the actuator to prove to ourselves that we actually did this correctly. Okay, I've hooked up my common and uh, input signal into my signal generator. So I'll turn the signal generator on, go through its cycle. It should come up and read uh, 4 milliamps. So it's generating a 4 milliamp. It won't move until I move this to 8 milliamps and now we see the positioning of the actuator it should go to about 25 percent then 50 percent 50.1 50 75 percent and 100 percent open so the actuator is calibrated correctly operational at this point ready to put it into service Thank you for joining us here at Promation's World Headquarters about setting up a P2 proportion.